there are certain things in life that we just don't want to do. And this seems to be a constant fixture in our lives. Now, my insight here for today is in the acceptance of that aspect of life. In that there will be things in my life ever present that I simply do not want to do. And acknowledging that truth is a huge help to us. Why is that? The problem is there'll be this thing in life that I really don't want to do. And rather than acknowledge that and accept that, we go into a, a dynamic where it's, I don't want to do this, but I should do it. I have to do it. Okay, hopefully at some point I'll feel more like doing it. Somewhere out of the clouds, there will come a moment, you know, this, this desire, this motivation to want to do it will materialize and then I'll do it. But that's a problem because that's going to lead to a sort of a torturous experience where I don't want to do it and I'm hoping eventually I will and I keep delaying, delaying, delaying until I get this magical moment when I actually feel like doing it. My book, it's free. It's a free book on my site. It's called Forget Happiness. And basically it's about self-parenting. It's about meeting your needs as a person. It tells you what the typical needs we have, we have, not in relationships, just in your own self as your own person. One of the needs is about this. It's about the aspect of life that I don't want to do. And it's an acknowledgement that it's an ever present fixture. Now, don't get me wrong. We want to be constructing our lives that we're, there's more and more space for the things we do want to do without question. But there will always be things in life that we don't really want to do. Now, in the book, I call that just the need for responsibility. Okay, so it's like, and it, this is an emotional need we have. Why do I say that? Well, it's because what happens to us when we ignore taking care of the things that we don't want to do? Emotionally, that has a very deleterious effect on us. So it's actually an emotional need to address the things in life that I don't really want to do. So this is about acceptance. This is about honesty. I don't want to do it. And I will never want to do it. And with that honesty, it's a lot easier now to start thinking about how can I actually go about addressing this, given that I don't want to do it. Because it's not going to be a motivational solution. There won't be a time when I feel like doing it. That's not going to happen. And in the absence of the motivation and the desire to do it, what we're left with is decision making and boundaries. Decision making and boundaries is how I'm going to deal with this. So, and I see this all the time and I used to experience this myself. It was waiting for that day or that moment when I would feel like doing it and I would constantly put it off and it was always there in the background and I'd carry it with me and because I was carrying it with me, I was carrying it into the aspects of my life that I actually did want to do and it was tainting that experience. I couldn't be fully present with the things in my life that I wanted to do because I was not addressing the things in life that I didn't want to do. So, things in life I don't want to do, how do I handle them? Well, decision making. I decide, okay, I'm never going to want to do this. So the first decision is, when will I do it? I'm just going to have to make a decision about that. Now, we don't rush ourselves, but we, we determine, okay, what's a rational approach here? don't want to do this now right now I really don't want to do it okay I'll never want to do it so I'm gonna do it a couple of hours from now maybe or I'm gonna do it this afternoon or I'll do it this evening and that's a decision I've made a decision about I'm going to do it of course you would also not commit to doing it for too long because you won't do it then right so we take small steps um, we well, maybe we break it up into parts, right? But we only commit to engaging with it for a short period of time, given that it's the, the actual rule is the more uh, hesitation or the more avoidant you are towards it, the shorter the time you should expose yourself to it. 
because we want to be doing this regularly. We want to be regularly exposing ourselves to the aspects of life that we don't want to do, but we feel are necessary. But what, that's what we do. We pick a time. I'll never want to do this, and I'm going to do it at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Okay, That's the decision-making. Now, the boundary part is 2 o'clock rolls around. I still don't want to do it. I will never want to do this. If 2 o'clock comes and I'm not doing it, well, what happens? And this is this is where the torture thing can kick in. Yeah, I don't feel like doing it now. Hopefully, I'll feel like doing it at some point. I, I won't do it now. I'll do it at 4. 4 o'clock rolls around. I still, I'm waiting to want to do it. Well, I don't really feel like doing it. And, you know, we're shocked by the fact that we don't want to do it, <laughs> it seems. So this dynamic of... I set a time, a decision, and then I don't enforce that decision. In other words, I allow myself to move a boundary with it. So my solution to this is we train ourselves with boundaries. So we do make the decision, okay, when am I going to start? Now I tell people, don't rush yourself. Just pick a time, a time, any time, really. It doesn't matter. As long as it's not too rushed on you, you give yourself time to sort of mentally prepare for it if you need to. But you say, okay, 2 o'clock. What happens if at 2 o'clock I'm not doing it? The boundary is, okay, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm not going to do it now, today. That's what, a, that's what an enforcement of a boundary looks like. Because if we, I always say like there's, there's two things you can do and one thing you can't. The two things you can do are, one is you can show up and do the work. That's perfect. The second thing is, you can decide, okay, I'm, I didn't I didn't show up, I'm not doing it. That's perfect. That's actually really healthy if you can do that. Because eventually what you're doing is you're reinforcing your own authority in, in decision making. The one thing you can't do, those are the two things you can do. The one thing you can't do is say I'm going to do it at this time and then move it. And then move it. We want to, and that's a, that's a habit we get into. And when we're constantly doing that, it's not, the, the problem with it really isn't about productivity the problem is you keep undermining your ability to make decisions each time you move a boundary each time you set a boundary and then you fail to enforce that boundary so just to recap we accept that there are things in life i will never want to do right i personally for me if i have to sit down and fill out a form or something my nervous system recoils it's like Oh God, okay, I have to sit down now and fill out this form. <laughs> it's like, I, there is no universe in which I am ever going to want to do that. But it's part of life, which is fine. So I make a decision about it. If I don't do it at that time, it won't be done today. Because it's not important enough for me to torture myself with this constant shifting of a boundary and constant indecision and constantly thinking about it and also as I mentioned earlier bringing that mental baggage into the things in my life that I actually do want to do I want that done and I want it gone okay so I hope this is a useful video just remember one thing from this video there are certain things in life I won't want to do we might say that that's a part of the ego. It, it may well be. Right? The ego functions on judgment. It judges things as good and bad. And well, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. And for me, it's, it's paperwork. But what the ego can also do is it comes in with that. And then it comes in on the other hand and says, well, you know, wait until you're motivated. This is the real problem with the ego is it gets you from both angles. So if you can disarm one of it, it, it disarms the whole thing. It doesn't matter really then if there are things in life that I don't want to do. It's like as long as I'm not torturing myself with those things that I don't want to do, everything is okay. Haven't we suffered enough with this? It's a rhetorical question. Haven't we suffered enough with waiting to be motivated for things? So remind yourself, it's okay. There are things I don't want to do that's okay that's a part of life it's one of the main emotional needs actually is addressing the things in life that i don't really want to do but if you can do that it opens your life up then there's more time and space to and energy to spend on the other needs in life meaning purpose creativity
taking care of yourself physically, time to reflect, to meditate, to think, work on yourself, time for fun and relaxation and spontaneity. So there needs to be a balance between all our emotional needs. In my model, there's like five needs. Just as an individual, this is separate to the relationships in your life. We're trying to balance five inner needs that we have. Responsibility. That ever-present pile of stuff that doesn't look very nice. Meaning, purpose, creativity is the second one. Take care of yourself physically. The most important need for me, I have discovered, for, for most people, I would say everybody, to be honest, is the time for reflection. Because meeting these needs is not easy. And it takes a lot of attunement and it takes a lot of attending to ourselves and reflecting what worked, what didn't work, what do I need more of, what do I need less of. And finally, the black sheep of the family, fun. That is not a negotiable need. That is an ever-present, essential need that must be taken seriously. Otherwise, there will be imbalance. So check out that book if you haven't already. And the takeaway again is it's okay to not want to do things. It is. It's natural. It's, it's healthy. It's a part of this life. At least in this on this planet, it's a part of, of life. I hope that's helpful. And thanks for being with me. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.